Hello, brothers and sisters of Christ. Turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 1, verse 34. Now, by this title, you realize it says Mary, dot, 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 a Levite, question mark. I was watching a comment, and it came across that someone made a comment, and we're going to read it real quick, uh, that Elizabeth is the cousin of Mary. Okay? And Elizabeth is, it implies that Elizabeth is a Levite. Hmm. So then it's like, is Mary a Levite? Is the King James Bible in error? Let's find out. But first, let's read what they're talking about. Luke chapter 1, verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? The angel shows up to Mary, tells her about having uh, given birth to a baby. Okay. That name was Jesus. It's Emmanuel. God with us. Okay, he'll save his people. He's given her that prophecy, and she says, How shall this be, seeing I know no man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Capital S, Son of God. Verse 36, And behold thy cousin Elizabeth. There's where we get it. She hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days, and went into the hill country with haste, into the city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. So we see there, it says in verse 36, Behold thy cousin Elizabeth. And someone made a comment as if the King James Bible is an error, or that Mary is actually the Levite. Okay. Is Elizabeth being the cousin of Mary an error in the King James Bible, or is Mary a Levite? I have that in my notes. Okay. And that's what we're going to answer today. And it might seem like a simple answer, because all we have to go to is um, Luke 33 and say, Okay, Mary is... It's from the house of the tribe of Judah. Okay? And we'll get to that. But in trying to figure out exactly what's going on here and looking in more depth, God has shown me some things I'd like to share with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? We know from Luke 3.3 3 that Mary is from the tribe of Judah. So we know Mary is not from the tribe of the Levites. So 1 Thessalonians 2.13 reads, my, Remember I told you, brothers and sisters Christ, try to do some memory cards with memory verses? Um, this is one of my memory verses. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. For when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, you receive it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually, also, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Sometimes I mess up where to put the also. Which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Okay? Do you believe this is God's perfect written word? Then this isn't a contradiction. It isn't a mistake. Okay, so then we have to look into it and say, okay, what do we do now? This is the first part. Do you believe this is God's perfect written word? Yeah, I believe it's God's perfect written word. It doesn't make any mistakes. No, it doesn't. Okay, there's something that I can't figure out. She's the cousin. She's, a, she's, a, she's in a Levite family, and she's the cousin of Mary. How does that work, Lord? That's when you go to two, 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that's where reading the whole Bible comes in. Okay? Yes, the Pauline epistles is what we need to really hide in our heart to live today for Jesus Christ. But we should be reading the whole Bible, brother says Christ. You better be reading the whole Bible. I listened to the Old Testament from Genesis all the way to, what's the last prophet? Malachi. I, read, I listen to it in Alexander Scorvey all the way through. When I hit Malachi, I start back over at Genesis all the way through. I spend an hour sitting outside listening to the Old Testament, sometimes a lot longer when I have my down days. Um, I start every morning with the New Testament, and I end every day with the New Testament, Matthew through Revelation. That way you're going through the whole Bible, and if you go through it enough times, God showed me something I want to share with you, brothers and sisters of Christ. What's this deal about Elizabeth being the cousin of Mary? So we know Mary from Luke 3.3. 3. She's from the house of Judah, the tribe of Judah. But it calls um, Elizabeth her cousin, implying that Elizabeth 
is also from the tribe of Judah. Hmm, how does this work? Well, let's go to Numbers. Turn to Numbers 26, 33. There was a situation in the Bible in the Old Testament where a man had no sons, it was only daughters. And there was an inheritance involved. How did they settle it and why did it need to be settled? And I think it will help answer our question about who uh, the cousin of Mary, Elizabeth, what house she's from. Okay. Numbers 26-33 in the Old Testament. Like I said, sometimes you can give a simple answer. Sometimes you want a little bit, you want some meat and God gives you a little bit more than you bargained for. And you do a little study saying, hey, I want a simple, short, quick answer. And the next thing you know, God shows you a lot more than you intended. And you're like, oh, Lord, this is amazing. Okay. Numbers 26-33. We read, and I uh, hope I can pronounce that right. Zalophahad, Zalophahad, the son of Hefer, had no sons but daughters. And the names of the daughters were of Zehophahad were Malachi and Noah and Hagla and Milcah and Tiraz. Okay, one, two, three, four, five daughters. No sons. Normally, this wouldn't be a big deal. We'll explain that as we keep going. Jump down to jump to the next chapter, Numbers 27, verse 1. When did this become a big big deal about no sons? They're just daughters. Okay. Verse 20, chapter 27, verse 1. Then came the daughters of Zehophahad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machor, the son of Manasseh, of the family of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. There's the tribe, the tribe of Joseph. Okay. Okay. And those, and there are the names of his daughters, Malachi, Noah, Hagla, and Hagla, and Milcah, and Tiras. And they stood before Moses, and before Eleazar the priest, and before the princes, and all the congregation, by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sins, and had no sons. The Old Testament people died in their sins. Their sins were covered, but they still died in them, and they went to Abraham's bosom. I found that pretty interesting that it said died in their own sins and had no sons. Now there's a problem. Why? Because there's no sons. We'll explain this a little bit more in a bit. Verse 4. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family because he hath no sons? Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. Inheritance, what it's talking about here. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zethelavad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. Okay, there's inheritance involved. Right? How it was back then, and we're going to keep reading, because it's, where it's going to be proven, how it was back then is women of the twelve tribes, women can marry outside into other tribes. Whoever they married into, they got adopted in, and now that's their inheritance. Okay? So you could have a woman from, let's say, the tribe of Judah marry a man from the tribe of the Levites, and now she's adopted into that inheritance. Her children are now Levites. Even though by blood she was of the house of Judah, her children are now Levites. She's adopted in. That inheritance goes to whoever she's married to. She becomes part of that family, that inheritance. Okay? Right here they're saying, we don't have any sons. Uh, our father had no sons. Because when the wives would marry the, the sons, the inheritance would stay within that family. But now there's no sons. There's just daughters. Okay? And the daughters are like, we have no, our father had no sons, and now we might miss out on the inheritance of our father's, our father's inheritance. They said, no, you get, you're still getting an inheritance. But that also opened a problem. What happens if they might marry into another tribe? 
the women would marry another tribe, what would happen in this situation where there's no sons, what would happen to that inheritance? It would go to that new tribe that they were married into. They become part of that new tribe, the, the other tribe that they marry into. How do we know this? Uh, jump down to uh, Numbers 36. I say jump down, but turn to Numbers 36, chapter 36. This is how they were worried about because this is how it was back then. A woman can marry any, into any tribe. They had to marry Jews, stay within the Jews. But a woman can marry any tribe and they become part of that tribe. And the men were the ones that kept the family going. Okay, the family line going for that tribe. Okay, he had no sons. So Moses says, yes, you get an inheritance. Then that opened up a problem. What happens if they marry outside their tribe? It was okay to, but in this situation, there's an inheritance. Okay. That's, the, that's the key here. There's an inheritance. Numbers 31, chapter 31, verse 1, it says, And the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, Gilead and the son of Machor, and the son of Manasseh, of the families of the son of Joseph, came near and spake before Moses and the, before the princes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel, and they said, The Lord commanded my Lord to give the land for an inheritance by lot to the children of Israel, and by and my Lord was commanded by the Lord. Remember, Lord case the Lord, my Lord was commanded by the Lord. No one can say Jesus Christ is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. I've been seeing this online, a lot of these professing Christians that got t-shirts, hats, t-shirts that says Jesus is Lord. There's very importance of saying the Lord. There are a lot of Lords out there. But Jesus is the Lord, but by the Lord, even though they're all capitalized, the Lord. Okay? To give the inheritance of Zephophad, our brother, unto his daughters. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, because it was allowed, people say, well, they're saying, this is saying it's not allowed. No, it was allowed, but you're now in a situation where an inheritance is involved. An inheritance is involved. And they don't want the inheritance going to another tribe. That's what's going on here. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our father, and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. Yeah. That's what would happen if these five girls, these five daughters, would marry outside the tribe of Joseph. Okay. Uh, all their inheritance, since there's no sons, and they're acting as, when it comes to inheritance, they're acting like the father's son, and that the inheritance goes to them, because he didn't have any sons. The inheritance would go where they go, because that's what happens when a woman marries a man. She goes where he goes. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance, and when the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then shall their inheritance be put unto, unto to the inheritance of the tribe, whereunto they are received. So shall their inheritance be taken away. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. This is a situation here, but it's for instruction righteous for you and me, brothers. And sisters. It helps show what's going on with Elizabeth. Well, I'll explain it as soon as we get through here. And here is the tribe of our father. And Moses commanded the children of Israel according to the word of the Lord, saying, The tribe of the son of Joseph shall hath said well. The tribe of the son of Joseph hath said well. This is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zillah have had, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family... Because of their situation, there's inheritance involved. But only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. Because there's inheritance involved. This isn't a command that all the women can only marry within their, their tribe. They can marry outside the tribe. It's just that there's inheritance involved in this, in this situation. And there's no sons to pass on that, inherited, that heritage. There's only daughters. Right? Only to the tribes of their father shall they marry. So, sh so shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from the tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. Okay? The inheritance, when there's inheritance involved, that inheritance needs to stay in the tribe of their fathers. When there's inheritance involved. 
That's important when we get to Jesus. Verse 8, And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father. Remember, that possesseth an inheritance. Remember, if you kept reading, we didn't read this, but let me go back a little bit. We didn't keep reading this, but under Numbers 27, when it talked about how you give them this, Moses had to make some decrees that, okay, when this situation pops up, when this situation pops up, and there's no sons, then the inheritance goes to the daughters. If there's no daughters, then it goes to this, then it goes to this person, this person. He's saying here, and every daughter that possesseth an inheritance, when you're in this situation where there are no sons, there's just daughters, and there's inheritance involved. This is talking about inheritance. Okay? And any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribes of her fathers, to keep it within her tribe. That the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. So if this wasn't the only situation, there was other situations, this is talking about the inheritance of the land. But if there's other situations that are like these daughters, where the man has no sons, and it's just daughters, then they do get the inheritance. It doesn't just disappear. The inheritance goes to the daughters, but the daughters need to marry within their tribe when there's inheritance involved. The land. Verse 9. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Even as the Lord commanded Moses, so did the daughters of Silphan. For Mala, Teres, and Hogla, and Milka, and Noah, the daughters of Zephalahan, were married unto their father's brother's son, sons. And they were married unto the family of the son of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and the judgments which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by the Jordan near Jericho. Now we see there that now Elizabeth... There's no inheritance involved if there's a brother, if she has a brother. If there's a man in the, uh, there's a son in the family, all the inheritance is, to, is done by him. And if all the inheritance is done by him, Elizabeth is now free. She can marry a man outside the tribe of, of Judah. I believe Elizabeth's from the tribe of Judah. But she's free to marry a man in the tribe of the Levites. And what happens? She now clings to him. And he, she, claims, she clings to his inheritance because he's the son of Levites, of a man that's a Levite. Her, her inheritance, he, she, she clings to him and it becomes his inheritance becomes her inheritance. Okay? Now Elizabeth, tribe of Judah, can marry Zacharias, tribe of Levite, forsaking her inheritance, not her inheritance, but her bloodline, not really, how do I say this? She now says, okay, I'm going to go be part of the Levites. She marries into the man. She's now part of the Levite family. Her sons are Levites. Her daughters are Levites until they get married. Okay, if they marry a Levite, it's whoever they get married to. That's how it is in the Old Testament. And that's how it kind of was today, too, till feminism rose up and just tries to destroy everything. When a woman got married, she took on the last name of her husband. She got adopted into the inheritance of her husband. She's now part of, like, my last name's Newton. You get married to me, you become Newton. Okay? Uh, if your last name is, you know, Frazier or, you know, whatever it is, you got adopted into that family and your children took the last names of their father. That inheritance. Okay, that's what it's taken. The same here. I believe Elizabeth from the tribe of Judah married Zacharias from the tribe of Levi, and there was no inheritance involved. Therefore, it was okay for her to do that, to marry outside her tribe, because there's no inheritance involved. This, there was a son. There was a brother. She had a brother that the inheritance was going to that would f keep on that inheritance, that family line. Okay. That's why John the Baptist is of the tribe of Levi. He's a Levite. Right? It's the Levitical priesthood. Okay? You say, well, that answers it. That does answer it for me, at least. I remember reading that story several times, and I just went through it again recently, and I remember that person saying, well, why is she called 
the cousin of Mary. She's the Levite, isn't she? Well, she's, bo she's married into the Levites. Absolutely. If you go by marriage, inheritance, she's a Levite. If you go by birth, blood, she was born in the house of Judah. But once you marry in, you're now Levite when it comes to women. Okay. Now, then the question comes back. The Lord put it on my heart and said, well, let's go back to Jesus now. Where is Jesus? Is Jesus of the tribe of Judah? Remember the Bible talks about the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, why was it so important to give us Joseph's family line? Joseph isn't his father. Why was it? I mean, this really hit home, brothers. Why was it so important? Let's read it real quick. Matthew, turn to Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Okay, we're going to read it, and there's a key word in there that makes it very important. And I got that wrong, brothers and sisters of Christ. When I said Luke 3.3, 3, that's not correct. For, for, for Mary. <laughs> I got it wrong. I did, I did Joseph's. Mary's, you'll find in Luke chapter 3, you'll find her lineage, and it goes to Judah. She's from the house of Judah. Um, but Matthew 1.3 shows that uh, J Joseph is from the line of Judah. But let's read Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Sorry, I made a mistake. Forgive me. Uh, Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. The book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. That's why it's important. The son of David. I'll stop there and we'll go ahead and talk about it. In the Old Testament, there's a promise of inheritance. King David, there would be a family line. There would be a king on his line. Whenever there was a king on the throne, it would be in the line of David. He, and even when Israel broke, and I believe ten... Or was it 10 or 9? I believe 9 went with, if you have to look into it, only 9 tribes eventually went separated, and 3 tribes cling to Judah. I mean, 2 tribes cling to Judah, which made 3 tribes. And you say, well, what is that? Well, you had the tribe of Benjamin cling to Judah. They didn't depart from Judah. And you had the Levites, because the 9 tribes decided to make their own priests. You have to read all about it. So that's story. They, the king decided to erect... Um, Golden calves, these are your gods that brought you out of Egypt. They had to make a place where they could do animal sacrifices when they were supposed to go back to Jerusalem once a year. They had to travel to Jerusalem once a year to do animal sacrifices to the Lord. But to keep him from going back to Judah, he made those statues, he made his own priesthood, and basically kicked the Levites out and had people that weren't Levites. I mean, it was just complete abomination, complete wickedness, complete sin. But anyway, God said when he separated him, he still said that he would always keep a portion of the land kingship to the house of David. Okay? What is Jesus called? Jesus called the lion of the tribe of Judah. What's Jesus going to do when he comes back at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble? He's going to rule and reign for a thousand years as king over Israel. So when we read this, keep this in mind. Inheritance. Why are we being told Jacob, uh, make sure I do it. Joseph is not Jesus' father. But Mary is his mother. And Mary is married to Joseph, and he, she is married in to that inheritance. Jesus gets that inheritance. That kingship, that he's going to be king someday. Not just any king, but king, capital K, king of kings and lord of lords. He's going to rule and reign with a rod of iron for a thousand years. When he came in the earthly ministry, he was preaching the kingdom of heaven. Let's read this real quick. Again, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas, and his brethren. Okay. And Judas begat Pharaoh of Zerah of Tamar, and Pharaoh begat Ezram, and Ezram begat Aram, and Aram begat Amminadab, and Amminadab begat Nason, and Nason begat Solomon, or Salmon, we want to say Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begat Abed of Ruth, and Abed begat Jesse. Who's Jesse the father of? And Jesse begat David, the king. 
David the king. That's the important thing. We'll keep reading the whole family line real quick, but remember that. And David the king, keeps throwing this in there, begat Solomon of her that was been the wife of Arias. It always points out David the king because that's when that inheritance started. David the king. If you read the Old Testament, Jesus, Jesus, I believe Jesus is God and God... Jesus is there. God is speaking. He's saying, I need to leave an inheritance for my servant David's sake. I need to leave him on the throne, have someone on the throne in the line of David for my servant David's sake. That's when the inheritance started. Verse 7, And Solomon began beget Rehoboam, and Rehoboam begat Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa, and Asa begat Josephat, and Josephat begat Joram, and Joram begat Oaz, and Oaz begat Jotham, and Jotham begat Achaias, and Achaias begat Ezekias, and Ezekias begat Manasseh, Manassas, and Manassas begat Ammon, and Ammon begat Josias, and Josias begat, I want to say, Jaconus, probably pronouncing that one wrong, and his brethren, about the time that they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias, I think it's Jeconias, begat Salathiel, and Salathiel begat Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begat Abiad, and Abiad begat Elikim, and Elikim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadok, and Sadok begat Achim, and Achim begat Iliad, and Iliad begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Mathan, and Mathan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. It's important there. It says, and Jacob begat Joseph. Why did he put that in there? The husband of Mary. She married into that inheritance. Of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. For the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven. I believe that we were given that. That Jesus has that inheritance of King David, that kingship. That's why he was preaching the kingdom of heaven. 1 Kings 11, 13, we read, Howbeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one to the tribe of, to thy son for David, that my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Jesus came to save his people for Jerusalem's sake. Not just for David, but for Jerusalem's sake. That inheritance. Okay, 1 Kings 11.32 says, But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Matthew 11.12 says, And from the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Why were we told? I, mean, I always ask the Lord this, and just with this study, it really sunk into me. And I know other brethren might have taught this, and for some reason it just didn't sink in. But the reason we have Joseph's lineage is because Mary married into that inheritance. And by marrying into that inheritance, Joseph is of the house of Judah. He has that kingship inheritance. Okay, he's actually from the line of David. Mary was married into the inheritance of Joseph, her husband, and that's where you get the capital S son of man. This is a whole other study. We could just keep branching off. Have you ever heard of uh, rabbit trails? We can go on a rabbit trail this direction and start talking about the Bible. When it talks about the son of man, it's talking about this right here, what we're just talking about. Jesus from the line of David, and he's a king. He has a right to that throne. He has that inheritance. Right? That's why you have capitalist son of man. It goes with the kingdom of heaven. That's sometimes called the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God can be the kingdom of heaven. Or the kingdom of God can be the spiritual kingdom. It's not meat and drink. See, there's two separate kingdoms. The kingdom of God can be used for either side. But kingdom of heaven is this. And if you actually compare Scripture with Scripture, there's times in Matthew, it'll say kingdom of, of God. But when you get to Mark, a parallel passage teaching the same story, it'll say kingdom of heaven. That's how you know that kingdom of God is referenced to kingdom of heaven, the physical kingdom. Once again, 2 Timothy 2.15. You compare Scripture with Scripture. But we see there, why were we told 
the generation of uh, Joseph, the father. He's not the father of Jesus. Why? Because Mary married into that inheritance. Therefore, her sons have that inheritance. And Jesus is the son of Mary. It's very important. And then it gets you to say, well, then why give Mary's family line? Turn to Luke 3.23. Luke 3.23. I'll tell you why. Then why give us, if that's the throne is what's important, lowercase, remember, it's capital S, son of man. Okay, not lowercase, it's capital S, son of man, referring to Jesus Christ. That kingship, that inheritance. So then why give Mary's family line, Luke 3.23. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. And it starts going through and you realize that um, it's actually going through what we believe to be Mary's family line. But you go down and you read all through there. Joseph, the son of Heli, which is the son of Mattath, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Jana, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Mathis, which was the son of Amos, which was the son of Nahum, which was the son of es Esli, Eslai, which was the son of Nagi, or Nagi, which was the son of Math, Maath, which was the son of Mathis, which was the son of Simeon, Simei, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of jo Joanna, which was the son of Risha, which was the son of Zorobabel, which was the son of Thalithiel, which was the son of Neri, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Adai, which was the son of Chaosim, Kosam, which was the son of Elmodam, which was the son of Ur, which was the son of Josie, which was the son of Eleazar, which was the son of Joram, which was the son of Matthias, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Joan, Joanna, which was the son of Elikium, which was the son of Mel Melia, which was the son of Minio, which was the son of Mathis, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David. Now, stop right here. This is where we got that family line that's Judah, it's from the house of Judah, the line of the tribe of Judah. But why give us the family line on, on Marie, um, Mary's side? And we're going to keep going here. Which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Sam, Salmon, which was the son of Neason, which was the son of Amenadab, which was the son of Aram, which was the son of Ezron, which was the son of Phares, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac. Judah is the son of uh, Jacob, which was the son of Isaac. There we get again, Judah. David's from the house of Judah. Then we get to Judah. And we get all the way back to Isaac, which was the son of Abraham. Now stop there. Why keep going? Because in her family line, we're not talking about that inheritance when it comes to the physical kingdom. What are we talking about inheritance here? Let's keep going to find out. Which was the son of Therah, which was the son of Nacor, which was the son of Sarek, which was the son of Regia, which was the son of Phalek, which was the son of Heber. And I apologize, I probably butchered some of these names. I don't know how well am I doing so far, but I'm butchering a lot of them. Forgive me. Which was the son of Selah, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Aphaxad, which was the son of Sem, which was the son of Noe, Noah, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, and Sam is supposed to be Shem, but Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Mahili. I mean, it's the translations going from uh, Greek to English versus the Hebrew to English. So some of these names, you're like, well, that sounds weird. Well, it's talking about Ham, Shem, and Japheth, the son of uh, um, Noah. But you have Sem, which is Shem, oh, another rabbit trail, of Noe, the son of Lamech. 
which is the son of Methuselah, which is the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Malahil, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos. We're almost getting there. It's taking a while. It's almost getting there. Which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So what's this inheritance trying to show us? That Jesus is the son of God. That's his father, is God. That's why it went all, I believe, went all the way to Adam. Who's Adam's father? God is. And in the Bible versions, it'll say God's, for God gave, so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Jesus is not the one and only son. We just read right there, Adam's also a son, which was the son of God. Adam was the created son. Jesus is the begotten son. It's God coming down in the manifest and manifest in the flesh, in the likeness of sinful flesh. Okay? So why go through that with Mary's bloodline then? For the inheritance of the kingdom of God, referring to the spiritual kingdom, and Jesus being God, manifest in his flesh. He's, his Father is God Almighty. That's why it went all the way back to Adam. He is God Almighty. That's why when you have the Son of God, it's talking about the body of God, the flesh of God, the Father is Jesus Christ. He's the image of the invisible God. Okay? For the inheritance of the kingdom of God, Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's why the kingdom of God, when it's referring to this, and not the physical kingdom, but the spiritual kingdom, that's where you get the capital S Son of God. That's God manifest in the flesh. He has that inheritance. He's God. You keep going through and you read about Jesus. They kept getting on to him and saying, Who is this that forgiveth sins? Only God can forgive sins. Well, Jesus has that inheritance. He is God manifest in the flesh. He can forgive sins. You see that, brothers of Christ? That's why that's there. Okay. But come on, you say, well, come on, well, okay, there's a lot of other, like, branches of studies we can go off on. The lower ca uh, capital S, Son of God, versus capital S, Son of Man, you know, and I've already explained it in its basic sense. Son of Man's talking about that physical kingdom, going back to King David, that inheritance that stops at King David. That's why it's, when you look at Joseph, it stopped at King David, okay? It stopped at Judah, because King David is from the house of the tribe of Judah, Okay, it stopped at Judah. Okay. The Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, the inheritance, the promise. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then his son Judah going all the way down. That's why it stopped there. It didn't go back any further. Because okay. that's talking about that inheritance, the physical land where he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. And that's still up to come. Don't believe anybody that tells you that that's already happened. It hasn't happened yet. Jesus has not ruled and reigned for a thousand years with the rod of iron. It's a physical rule. I know some false religions out there say, oh, it was just spiritual. No, it's physical. Jesus will sit on a physical throne in Jerusalem, and he will physically reign for a thousand years, and he will rule with the rod of iron. It's an action. It's a physical action. It's not spiritual. It's physical. Okay. Okay. And then you have this, the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom, that fellowship with the Lord, but he has, the, he has that inheritance. He's on the earth forgiving sins because it's God manifest in the flesh. The, the soul of Jesus is God the Father, and through Jesus Christ, he's forgiven sins. He can because he is God manifest in the flesh. He has that inheritance. That's why with uh, hers, it goes all the way back. Okay? Now, but why do this twice? Why come out and prove twice that Jesus is from the line of the tribe of Judah? And he's got these inheritance. Well, the first one we already explained, he's got the, two, he's got the inheritance. The inheritance that comes from King David, and the inheritance that comes from being God manifest in the flesh. Okay? He does things that a normal person can't do. I cannot forgive your sins, brother says Christ. I can forgive you hurting me. But the consequences of that sin, ultimate consequence of that sin, I can forgive you for what you did to me. But that ultimate consequence of that sin, I can't forgive you. I don't have that inheritance. I don't have that power and authority. 
Only one man has that power and authority. There's one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Only God, manifest in the flesh, has that authority to forgive your sins. The Bible talks about how God has given all judgment over to the Son. That's why Jesus Christ is at the judgment seat of Christ, judging brethren. We'll be getting into some other studies about that, you know, trying to warn the brethren in these last days. How, do you, how are you going to, when you stand before him, how's it going to go? How's it going to go? But he's the one judging. At the great white throne, the lost world, he'll be judging the whole lost world. Okay? He's the ultimate righteous judge. He's got that inheritance. He's God manifest in the flesh. But why do it twice? I mean, what's the big deal? Well, Genesis, you don't have to turn here, but Genesis 41, 15, it says, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand dreams to interpret it. You jump down to verse 25, and it says, And Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he's about to do. He had two dreams, but he said the dreams are one. Well, then why have two dreams? Why tell, have two family lines? Why do it twice, Lord? This, I'm going to tell you what I believe. When you jump down to verse 32, it says, And for the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God. And God will shortly bring it to pass. It is established by God. When you read the Bible, brother and sister Christ, God establishes his son's line twice. For those two inheritance mainly, but also because he's establishing he's from the house of Judah. That's why he's called the lion. He's fulfilling prophecy, and he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Why does he do it twice? Joseph isn't his father. Mary's his mother. But why do it twice? To establish it. To make it so. It's absolute truth. Amen. Right? And there's still people trying to mess things, and they're trying to mess that up when it comes to that. Luke 136 is not an error. Okay, brothers of Christ, it's not an error. She can be the cousin. Okay. Here's another example. When God does something multiple times, Matthew 24, 35, Mark 13, 31, Luke 21, 33. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. When he says it more than once, it's because he's establishing something, and it's so. It's absolute true. All through the Bible, do not add to my words, do not subtract to my words. Why does he tell us more than once? To establish it. You don't do it. And so on and so forth. Why do we have it twice? To establish it. Okay. God established his son's line, and there are still people trying to mess it up today. So when you have someone come and start questioning, well, that's an error. She's not the cousin of Mary. She could easily be the cousin of Mary, and I believe it is because the Bible says she is. And it's still justified that she can be the cousin of Mary and be married to a Levite. It's still possible. Okay? But once again, Brother and Sister Christ, what it comes down to is this book right here. Do you believe this book is our foundation on matters of faith and practice? Yes, I do. I do. Do you believe in it? There's always going to be someone that comes along and has a whisper, Brother Christ, and tries to whisper something small. Well, there could be an error here, or there can be an error here, or, uh, you know, the old, the original 1611, they, you know, had a lot of spelling errors and stuff like this, and are you sure it's God's prayer? The Bible that I have in my hands right now, this book right here, King James Bible, authorized version, is the perfect written Word of God. And I'm going to take you back to Thessalonians 2.13 again, where it says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, all this is stuff written down by men of God, who spake by the Holy Ghost, were moved and spake by the Holy Ghost, which you, which you heard of us, you received it not as the words of men, but as is the truth, the words of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Brother, Sister Christ, when God showed me this, I was like, this is just so amazing. This is just so amazing. I'm hoping I didn't. I lost it. I'll have to fix this up later. This is so amazing. You know, there's questions that I've always had, you know. I was reading, the old, listening to the Old Testament, going back through. Well, um, didn't, they, didn't the Jews get all their land already? And if you read Joshua, because I just got finished the book of Joshua, there towards the end it said that there were still people that didn't get run out and there was some land that didn't get taken yet. 
And Joshua was telling them that if you follow God, you need to get these people out. And what happened was is the tribe started making leagues with the local people and putting them to tribute. As long as you're paying us, we'll let you live. Tribute. They went against God's commandments. That's why that promise is still hasn't been fulfilled. But you find this out by reading the Bible and trusting the Bible. So when you see something in the Bible you don't quite understand yet, pray. Remember what the Bible says? Uh, you're to pray and God will give uh, uh, for wisdom and God, that God give to all men liberally. Okay? You pray for wisdom. You pray for God to open this book to you. And he will open this book to you. So we're going to end this study with grace and peace. And I, saw, I, want to say, I want to say I'm sorry again for if I butchered too many of the names. I hope I did okay on the names. But um, it's very important. Simple Bible studies like that. When you get a simple question like that, thinks it's a simple answer. Oh, no, we could have gone straight to Luke chapter 3 and said, Nope, see here, Mary's from the tribe of Judah, so she's not a Levite. But then it leaves the question of, well, it says Elizabeth is her cousin. But it looks like she's a, a Levite and Jew at home. So there's a little bit more to the studies sometimes. Okay, I can give it a simple answer, but brothers of Christ, sometimes we need to study. We need to compare Scripture with Scripture. You need to stay in this whole book. Okay? So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm praying for all my brethren, and please pray for me, um, and I will see you in the next study.